Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna have a look at how to create this timeline animation. Now, this was a request from one of the members of my Flatpak FX crew. Now, if you wanna download this project file and all the files, you can also download that as part of the Flatpak FX crew. There'll be a link down in the description below. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new composition here, which is 1920 by 1080. I'm also gonna create a new composition, but I'm gonna make this width 5,000 and leave the height at 1020. So this is gonna be where we're gonna create the timeline. So in my comp two with this timeline, what I'm going to do is just come up here and I want to create basically that line, which is gonna go across our entire composition. I can scale this up and I can also make it whatever color that I want, something like that. Next, I wanna create this little animation here of these lines coming up, this circle and this little marker. So what I'm going to do is I want to animate this line. So what I'm going to do is add a trims path to this. And with the trims path back here, what I'm going to do is basically just animate this out to somewhere about here. And then I'm just going to copy this, paste it. So we kind of end up with this stopping like this and then it can start again. Now when it stops, what I also want to do is create another little stroke path. I'm gonna dial down the width here. And what I'm going to do is I just want it to basically come up like this and then I want it to come across something like that. Now I just wanna make sure I've got no fill on this one. I can readjust that position. And while I'm still on that layer, so I've still got that shape path selected, what I'm also going to do is I'm holding shift and I'm gonna draw out a circle here. So with that circle, what I'm going to do is move this so it kind of lines up and you can also kind of readjust this here. So something like that. Now, if I come down to the contents here, I want to apply a trims path to all of this. So I'm gonna apply that underneath here. So now that when we dial this down, it's gonna animate all of that. Now we want them to animate individually. And if we move that shape above that ellipse, it's going to animate the line first, and then when it's done, it's going to basically start animating the circle. So if I bring this across, you can see the circle sort of starts up the top. So an easy way to fix this is to grab that ellipse. And if I go down to the transform properties, you can basically just rotate this 90 degrees so that it kind of starts and ends on that point there. Now, the other thing I'm also going to do is drag this under my main timeline here. And you can also readjust this position here if you need to kind of get it right. But that's how we kind of create that circle effect. Now, if you like these timeline style animations and you wanna learn more about animation or even learn more about how to create other types of timelines, then definitely check out my Animation Master course. There'll be a link down in the description. In that, I'll walk you through After Effects and animation from the very beginner point of view right through to creating some really awesome and unique looking animations and effects. Even if you've never used After Effects before, it's a great beginner course for anyone who's brand new to After Effects and just really wants to understand how to create different types of animations. I've had hundreds of students go through this course and you can also read all the testimonials and watch the testimonials via that link in the description below. If you're someone who's brand new to animation, you're just kind of looking to get into animation and learn about all the different things that After Effects can do, then this is definitely the course for you. Now to these layers, all I did was I created a glow effect and the glow settings, you can basically just search for glow up here and these are the settings that I changed. It just kind of adds this subtle glow effect, just kind of really takes that to the next level. And then here using my text tool, I just typed out a new line of text and if I hit T on the keyboard, I just basically created an opacity keyframe from zero to 100, so that just fades on. And I also added that same glow effect to that layer. So we end up with that text and we've got that circle now animating in. Now to get my image to animate in, what I'm going to do is grab my first image here 
And to this image, what I did was I applied these settings here. So I used the extract feature just to remove the white. I inverted it so it was, so then it kind of flipped that black to white. And then I also just dragged up on the brightness just to kind of give it a bit more. I hit P on the keyboard and created a position animation. So it sort of moves in like this. Now to mask that, all I did was I simply came up here, made sure I had nothing selected. I can create basically like a solid here with no stroke. And what I'm going to do is draw out a circle, which sort of matches that circle that I've created. And then I'm also with my pen tool on that same layer, I'm going to create basically a shape that sits like this. Now we can use this as a mask for that layer underneath. So if I hit these toggle switches here, I'm then going to select this to be the mask and you'll see that now it only appears inside wherever that mask is, if that makes sense. Other thing you can also do is just turn on motion blur for that layer and that's gonna create basically this nice little motion blur effect like that. So that's how we basically created that sort of timeline. Next, I wanna create this little marker that sort of popped up here. Now the way that I did this was I just right click, created a new composition and I set this one to be 500 by 500. So we end up with a little square box. And all I did was I grabbed my ellipse here. I don't want any fill and I'm just gonna drag up on the stroke path. We can adjust this later. Sort of drag this up, something like that. And then for that, what I'm also gonna do is just come down here and animate the scale function from zero up like that. Make these easy ease. So we kind of get that little effect. I'm then gonna duplicate that. And with the one underneath, what I want to do is slightly off center it. And for this one, I'm gonna scale this one up even higher and actually what I'm going to do is also just hit you on that layer above, scale this one down. And for this one, what I'm also going to do is hit T and I wanna drop the opacity right down. And I'm also going to animate that opacity so it sort of fades off over time. So I want this to sort of drop off. So we kind of get this little effect. If you move that across, you can kind of exaggerate that effect. If you want more or less, you can drag this up and even scale this down very slightly, something like this. Then it's just a matter of duplicating that and off-centering that. So you kind of get this effect of it sort of moving like that. And that's how I kind of created this little marker that was flashing. Now, once you've got that, then you can come in here and you can simply just add that marker in over the top. And because it's already a composition, we can just scale this down. And there you go. You've got that finished effect there. You can also take that glow layer from that main timeline and paste that on top. And there we go. We have that little marker. You can just adjust that position of that marker come in at the right time. And that's how I created that little timeline animation. Next, all I did was I basically just repeated this process and flipped the layer. So I basically just duplicated and kept flipping it underneath. So what I did was for the next part, I just hit U to bring up that timeline animation, animated this across to something like there, copy that, paste there, And then what I'm going to do is just duplicate that shape path because you've already got it. You can basically just move it. If I hit Y on the keyboard, I can just reposition this anchor point. And if I hit W, I can just rotate this down because you already have this fully animated. So you don't need to keep basically reanimating it every time. You can just off center this so that when it gets to this point, then that animation starts. And there you go, I've got that animation, basically all the reverse of it flipped over. 
you can duplicate that marker, drag that down here. So that sits over the top. And then you can just take that text again. You can duplicate that text, move that text down there and then just do the same. So you can basically just, so I basically created another image here, put that in that position and created another mask. If I turn that mask on, there you go. There's that mask using that same principle of that layer then moving in. And then I created another line here. So if I hit U, I can bring up those position of those layers. And then I just created another two positions here as well. So these kind of animate in as they kind of get to this point. So as the line hits there, I had these two lines and I had these two images animate in as well. Now this works really well if you're comparing say two points in a timeline, you wanna compare two points. You could also use a, an adjustment layer over the top. So if I right click and created say a new adjustment layer, I could add a blur effect. So I could add say like the camera lens blur and I could essentially just kind of create a little mask that went like this. And then just feather this out. So it kind of creates that little blur effect if you wanted you know, to focus on one part of the timeline. You don't have to do that, but that's just something else that you can do. But basically it's exactly the same as what I've shown you here in these steps. You just duplicate them, move them across, add that text in and until you get different combinations of what you, you know, different things that you like. And then with my main comp, so going back to that original comp that we created, I wanna create a new background here. So I'm gonna create a new solid. And then to this, I'm going to add a gradient ramp. Now these are the settings that I've changed here. I've made this sort of this dark gray color here, and this one even darker and that kind of gives it this nice little ramp effect. If you're getting that banding, which comes from basically the low bit depth, you can change this to 16 bits per channel. I only recommend doing that at the very end. So if you're exporting, you're getting that banding effect. That's why, because it's eight bit. So just change that to 16 bit and then you'll basically get a much smoother gradient ramp. And then over the top of that, I created a new basically adjustment layer and to this, what I can do is add a vignette. And you want to pin the highlights, so bring that up. And you can just kind of create a nice little gradient over the top. And then I can just grab my timeline. So the one that I created from before, I'm just going to drag that in. And this is a good way of doing it because it makes it nice and simple then to animate all of this. So I can just hit P. I'm going to create a position property here something like this, move this across. And I just want it sort of basically moving very slowly across. So something like that. And then I want it to speed up again. So when it kind of gets to this point, then kind of moving across again, something like that. A little bit of movement there. And then at the end, I want it to then move across and very slightly across there again. So you just kind of get this animation of the timeline. This is a much better way of doing it, of creating one comp with all your timeline laid out because when you're animating, you can kind of see it all laid out. It's much easier to animate. Then when you go into your main comp, then you can kind of adjust it however you need. So it makes it much easier then to animate all of this however you like. You can also add some, say, zoom into this timeline if you want to create like a scale keyframe, zoom into a specific part, zoom out. You can add motion blur. This is a much better way of doing it overall. So hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks on creating these sort of timelines inside of After Effects. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.